Good morning. Welcome to the ultimate guide to the vagus nerve stimulation part two. My name is Dr. Robert Groisman. And on the first part, uh, which I'll link below, we talked about um, how to stimulate and, and what stimulation does. In this particular um, part, we will talk about what the vagus nerve is and what it's been approved for and what it hasn't been approved for for stimulation. So what is the vagus nerve? It is one of the cranial nerves. We have 12 cranial nerves, one on, the, uh, one on each side. So basically 24 total cranial nerves. Uh, the vagus nerve is considered cranial nerve uh, 10. It originates in the brainstem like most of the cranial nerves. It is one of the longest nerves in the body and it's actually kind of a special nerve. Uh, most of the cranial nerves stay in the face and the head and the neck area, but uh, the vagus nerve does something different. It is um, actually the vagus means wander in Latin, and it actually wanders throughout the entire <laughs> the entire body. It's one of the few nerves that communicates with areas of the brain. It basically talks and uh, connects to just about every organ in your body, and it also talks to your immune system. The main enforcer of the parasympathetic nervous system. It not only enforces, but it also listens from the organs and determines what needs to happen and also enforces what happens uh, from the parasympathetic nervous system. What does the vagus nervous do? The uh, vagus nerve do? Aside from communicates with the brain, uh, it controls um, or helps with relaxation and controls anxiety. It can stimulate tear production and release tears. It can stimulate saliva. It goes to the digestive system and works on peristalsis. It causes gastric acid production. It's involved in the gag reflex. This is where some people have hoarseness or trouble swallowing. That is because it controls and works in the voice box of the larynx. It's partly responsible for taste. That is the back of the tongue and the back of the throat. It controls the heart rate and heart force um, pumping. So basically when the vagus nerve is working, the heart rate goes down and the force comes down as well. It also causes pulmonary airway constriction and mucus production. So these are some of the things the vagus nerve can do. What has it been approved for? Um, basically vagus nerve stimulation. Now, a lot of these are approved by the FDA, not all of these. Um, so if we look at um, things like epilepsy uh, and seizures, and now these, these are approved for an internal vagus nerve stimula stimulator, not an external one, but still, um, it still works though, even if you do it externally. Uh, for depression, it's been approved, but not for anxiety, interestingly enough. Uh, however, it does still work for anxiety. Cluster headaches, uh, migraines, it's not approved for, but it does work for migraines. PTSD, another one not approved for, but it does work or help. Uh, here's one that has been approved for, inflammatory bowel disease like um, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and celiac disease. Um, who would have thought rheumatoid arthritis would be helped by vagus nerve stimulation? This again goes back to the immune system control and modulation. And lastly, tinnitus. All of these have studies showing its effectiveness in these uh, by stimulating the vagus nerve. What is dysautonomia? So by saying dysautonomia, it's essentially synonymous with autonomic neuropathy. There's other neuropathies. There's a sensory neuropathy where it involves the sensory nervous system. There's a motor neuropathy where it involves uh, movement and, and muscles. And there's an autonomic neuropathy where it involves the autonomic nervous system. Now, saying this autonomia or autonomic neuropathy just means that there's a sympathetic, parasympathetic, or both a problem. So they either are too high or too low or mismatched. What conditions damage the autonomic nervous system? Well, the most common is diabetes. Diabetes mellitus, to be more precise. Um, not only does it, does it damage the sensory nervous system where you're filling pins and needles in your feet and hands, 
Uh, it also damages the autonomic nervous system. There are several autoimmune diseases such as Sjogren's, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and celiac disease. All of these can attack the nervous system specifically, um, including the autonomic nervous system. Certain chemotherapies do this. Lyme disease can also attack the autonomic nervous system, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, alcoholism, uh, specifically chronic alcoholism. Uh, surgical damage that's just cutting the vagus nerve um, during a particular surgery. And of course, we have long COVID. How do you know if you have this autonomia? Well, there's no direct way to measure the autonomic nervous system. There's only indirect ways. And some of the ways you can do that is through a tilt table where you're flat or supine uh, with the floor, and then you're, sat, you're sitting up or vertical to the floor, and we check the ch blood pressure and the heart rate to see if they change. Valsalva maneuver is just kind of um, uh, like a cough or um, straining yourself uh, against the closed glottis. Um, there's a pseudomotor reflex test, also called QSART. Now, this is a sweat response to an electrical stimulus. There's a stimulus and you measure how much sweat is produced. Uh, bladder em emptying, there's, there's a way to image the bladder and see um, how much uh, urine is left in the bladder. Uh, that also tells you how well the system is working. Uh, gastric emptying, this goes to gastroparesis, which uh, some people suffer from, including during long COVID. Um, essentially, if you're not emptying out, that means your digestion is not working well. And that means that your peristalsis is not working well. This indirectly suggests that you have dysautonomia or an autonomic neuropathy. HRV, heart rate variability. This one we know. A non-invasive test, you can indirectly determine how your sympathetic and your parasympathetic is working. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this um, second part. And again, don't forget to subscribe. And I will link the part one to, um, to the description below.